Let the games begin. Zweiter Tag der Happy Bad International Darts Open 2016. Und wir starten mit dem ältesten Teilnehmer im Turnier. Er kommt aus Schottland, ist 57 Jahre alt, ein pensionierter Feuerwehrmann. Die aktuelle Nummer 88 der Welt. Herzlich willkommen, The Phoenix, Jim Walker. Jim Walker tritt gegen die aktuelle Nummer 11 der Weltrangliste an. Er hat in diesem Jahr alleine drei Pro-Tour-Turniere gewinnen können, steht bei insgesamt acht Titeln. Aus Stoke-on-Trent, Ian Diamond White. Yeah. And big names on the way. Ian White, the first seeded player in action, seeded number six and straight in there with two treble twenties. How oh. about all three? Well, just in case you're in any doubt about the atmosphere inside the Saxon Arena here in Risa, it's just seen it raise the level or two there, the decibel levels. Upper gear, Jim Walker coming through yesterday in his opening match. Just listen to that. Fourth dart Ian White's thrown. Absolutely baying for a nine darter already, this crowd here in the east of Germany. Second year we've held the tournament here in Risa. Michael Smith, the defending champion. We will see the bully boy in action this evening. Six games this afternoon, eight games this evening. As Rob's already mentioned, two men given buys through to the last 16, the final day of action. Look at this from Ian White. One and 40. On for an 11 data. Yeah, Jordi Mayweather's up. And Ryan Meeker will play each other in the last 16. Michael Van Gogh in the world number one, withdrawing for medical reasons, got a dodgy ankle. And Daryl Gurney unable to play 96. in the end after breaking yeah, a bone in his hand. 81. That has blown this tournament wide open. And maybe Ian White could claim his first Euro Tour title. Double six for a 12 data to kick things off. And misses 75. inside. And there's just a sniff of a chance now for Jim Walker. He's not on a finish, but double three can be a tricky one to see off. Yeah, Walker was very uh, good on his doubles yesterday. Six from nine in that win over Mike Langendorf, one of the host nation qualifiers who fell at the very first hurdle. 41. This is a very different proposition yeah, for the six. former firefighter. Now, the Richard Ashdown shots. One for double one. Ooh, now then, the Rob Malarkey shot. <laughs> There it is, takes it out. A 15 data finished on double one for the Diamond Ian White. Well, Jim Walker, it, it was very good finishing yesterday, as you said. He 66%. Just a little glance over his shoulder there. That one is yanked into the skinny bit of the one. But his average wasn't stratospheric he's only 84 85 but he was a little bit unlucky he was in and around that treble bed a lot and he kept seeing darts deflect 81. out of it into the 20 and into the five and into the one now another day if he'd thrown like that with a little bit more luck his average could have been over the 90 mark quite comfortably 60. and you would think he's going to have to improve on his scoring from that first round performance against Mike Langendorf, if he is going to trouble Ian White. Ian White did make the semi-finals here last year, played some Wonder. really good darts. Mickey Mansell, Robert Thornton, a phenomenal performance against Stephen Bunting. Average around about 105 in that game mm. before he ended up losing to the eventual champion Michael Smith. And how about this, Jim Walker? Wonder. Lovely oh, stuff. Top back. Right in the top corner there from Jim Walker. The thing about Ian White is as well, he arrived in Risa this uh, weekend. Let's just see what he can do here. Well, no 180 here. He arrived in here uh, in Risa in fairly good nick because he won his third Pro Tour title of 2016, winning Players' Championship 13 last month, beating Van der Pass in the final in Barnsley 6-4. Yeah, been a very good year for Ian White. He's got seven PDC titles to his name, three of them since January including that incredible 6-0 whitewash of Michael Van Gogh in the final one of the Pro Tour events. 100. It, it's always a question, though. You know, they've, they've had a bit of a break. All those guys who haven't been playing World Series yeah, over the past Yeah, it's been a, a bit of a lull for mm. them. They, they need a holiday. Oh, hang on. Sure. Hang about. Double-double, Jim Walker. Why not? <laughs> Jim, <show laughs> the second leg. Jim Walker. 
Wow. But like you see in the well. zone first, game on. Well, we talked about some of the highlights yesterday. That's uh, an early candidate from Jim Walker there. Top stops for uh, a one-all scoreline here. We have seen some great finishing this weekend. Yeah, it was a 167 checkout from Kyle Anderson. There was a phenomenal 141 from Michael Barnard to save the game in the penultimate leg. He then lost the deciding leg. There was a 151 from Ryan Meikle in, in the very, very first, first leg, leg on his European Tour debut. And I forgot about it last night when I was listing the uh, candidates, the shortlist. Mark Frost with a 154 as well. There, there's been some great finishing here in Risa already this weekend. You would think 41. we're going to be in for plenty more and over the, the course of today. The thing about the Frost one, he was 5-2 down, so he was, he was scrapping for his life in that match when he pulled it back to 5-3. lost in the end 6-3 to uh, bow out at the first hurdle once again. But, yeah, some terrific 60. stuff. Some great all-round performances. Doby last night, 102 average mm. uh, in his 6-1 win. Very eye-catching once again. Joe Cullen's match with De Graaf was a... Very, very good match indeed, apart from the 26 start leg that the Graf won for 100. a three-all scoreline. Yeah, there was some messing around on doubles from both men in that game, but Joe still came away with an average of almost 99. Yeah. And you would think if he sorts the finishing out, he could be in 60. with a chance. He's not won a PDC ranking title as yet, Joe Cullen, a senior one at any rate. But with no Michael Van Gerwen here, there's a real opportunity for a number of these guys to go and claim a first European Tour title. We have got other European Tour winners in the field, you know, Peter Wright, Kim Hybrex, Michael Smith, obviously the defending champion, Dave Chisnell. But there's a number of guys who have a real, real chance, what particularly happened? those guys in the top half of the draw where Van Gerwen and Gurney have both withdrawn. Mm. So, you know, maybe that piles some added pressure on the likes of Jella Klaassen and Mensah. Mensor Sulevich. Mensor Sulevich is third favourite for this title, and yet he has never even made a final of a PDC ranking event. And Ian White fires in a second maximum. And it was an important one as well because it gets him down to a two dart finish with Jim Walker looking to oh, set this up quite handily himself. Really needed to fill that up, Ian White. Twenty-five? Is it down for the nineteen? Oh, Seventeen? Okay. Understandable. A 25 would have got him below that 120 mark where a treble would have given him data a double rather than at the bullseye, but it may not matter. Ian White needs the treble 18, doesn't get it. So mm. Walker, a nod of the head at the back of the stage from the yeah. fireman. Fancy this. 58 years old, Jim Walker. Originally from Dalbeatty, hence the SCO in brackets after his name. Now lives in Leicestershire. Double 18. Gets it. All he wants. Mm, well, 86. Outside the uh, In your green 40. stuff as well. We've had two very good legs to start this off. This hasn't been quite so good, but Ian White won't mind Ian if he pins double top, leg. and that's exactly Ian what he White. does. Fourth leg is Jim to throw first. Game on. Well, Jim Walker did it the hard way in qualifying as well. He was one of only three men to come through three rounds of qualifying as opposed to two for this tournament. 60. James Richardson and Andy Hamilton were the others, but they fell by the wayside yesterday. But in those three qualifiers, he dropped only three legs. Ryan Harrington, 6-1, and Jonathan Worsley, 6-2. He whitewashed Matthew Edgar. Absolutely breezed through it. 40. Yeah, first time we've seen him on the European Tour for a long while. And he's never gone past the second round, Jim Walker. He, he managed to make 58. three European Tour events in 2013. So it's three years since we've seen him on these stages. And in that time, the European Tour has grown to such an extent. I mean, he, he won't have played in front of a crowd like this. Mm. Certainly not on the European Tour. So hang on. Jim Walker's last appearance in Europe was in Gibraltar 2013. Yeah, yeah. So that was when we had our last nine dart finish. It was. Jim Walker is clearly the, the missing link. The talisman. Ross Smith's not here to hit it, though. But as long as Jim Walker's here, as long as Jim Walker's here, that, that's the key. <laughs> Most we've seen, I think we've seen six perfect darts, haven't we? We haven't seen anybody go seven perfect darts uh, this that's weekend. Right, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, he also uh, made the second round 100. in Austria that year as well. And the first round of the UK Masters when that was part of the European Tour. 
and he made four European appearances in 2012 as well. So it's a, a long overdue return for Jim Walker. He'll be hoping it continues into a third day here, but he's got work to do. Certainly has in this leg. That doesn't get him down to in the finish. And Ian White's got six 21. starts from 1-2-1. One, one. Treble 20 he'll look at first. And it may be treble 15 if he hits it. Well, it isn't, so... Hmm, OK, well, that's 21 off. 61. Well, it should give him two darts for the leg when he returns. It's one of those ones, 20 for double top. He'd want to hit the fat bit of the 20, but get it well out of the way to one side to leave plenty of the bed to aim at, because Ian White's darts do kick up a little bit. He doesn't want to block his path to the top of the board. Jim Walker's just got to concentrate on finding a treble. Sim full of darts, Ian White, to see this leg off. Now, plenty of room to the right. He just goes over the top of it. Why not? And that is 3 1, the first break of throw. Over the top, Ian White. There's a cushion here now. With the break, leading 3 1. The winner of this, by the way, will face either Gerwin Price or Dragatin Horvat, who meet in the last match of the afternoon session today. Price is seated at 11 here this weekend, and he's another candidate as well. Well, I mean, he's, he's won his first two PDC titles this year, and granted, some people have been quick to point out that, you know, he's won those two titles when a lot of the big boys haven't been playing in those tournaments. 81. But a lot of the big boys aren't here this weekend either, so he's got form for hoovering up titles when the likes of MVG and Phil the Power Taylor aren't here. We know he's got the game. 61. It's whether he can put it together, and we don't know what kind of form he's in. Go in price, not seen him for a little while, as we haven't with a number of these guys in this break over August. But Ian White well, seems to be playing 40. solid stuff. It's not spectacular, but 50% in his doubles and a 93 average. It's, it's all right for his first four legs. There you go, 90, 91. Room for improvement. 140. Chance for Jim Walker to break back. Love a maximum here to leave a two-dollar finish. Oh, it looks good as well. 98. Hmm, interesting decision to move over to the 18s. Maybe didn't like the lie. 15, 14, 19, 14. So three legs, one in five visits to the board, and then that one, which is a little bit scrappy in the third leg. Ian White down to a finish, but it's a big one. And if Jim Walker, he, this is something he hasn't managed to do so far in this game, is set the shot up from this mm. sort of position. He hasn't put in a big score to really pile the pressure on Ian White, but that will help. Ian, you require 140. Yeah, it's his uh, approach work from the middle of the fairway that's sort of let him down so far. But uh, White here in the mood to gobble this up. It's in there, double ten. He wants for a 4-1 lead. Just inside the wire, might be punished here, Junior Jim Walker, with a good chance to break back. Now, what's the route? Is it 20s he's looking at? It is. He'll stay there. Finds the treble, double five now. Two right on the wire. Here you require ten. It must have looked good. He's walked back the wrong way, now he's yeah. jumping across. Yeah, you do that, Jim Walker. I don't think Jim Walker's the kind of man to play these sort of silly games, but do it. Why not? It's an important moment of the game. Try and put your opponent off. Don't work with him. Why? Here, White. Six like he's Jim first. Yeah, nice little switch there from Jim Walker, just acknowledging his uh, slight mistake. Exit stage right when leading the hockey. Well, Ian White's one of those people. Sometimes you don't know which Ian White is going to turn up. He was a semi-finalist in Gibraltar earlier this year, lost 6-0 to Chizzy in the last four. But then the following weekend in Hamburg, he went down 6-2 to Max Hopp in his opening 100. match and then lost 6-0 to Nigel Hayden in uh, Austria as well. So, Yeah, that was a curious result, that he, one. He can be difficult to weigh up. He's, I mean, he's usually a, a very consistent performer, Ian White, but there you go. That's 180 number three for the Diamond. That shut me up. Nigel Hayden was <laughs> playing some very good darts that weekend in Austria. He very nearly found himself going even further in that tournament. Nice to see from the Undertaker. 
But this is kind of what Ian White does. He averages in the mid to high 90s, and he finishes pretty well. He's on 50% and averaging 97 and change. And ooh. 93. Well, he may be racing away with this, Ian White, to set up a last 16 clash with Dragatin Horvat or Gerwin Price. We've got Stephen Bunting and Robbie Green in an Merseyside, Merseyside clash. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. They do, do, don't they, do? And then the Austro German derby between Mensur Solovic and Mike Holtz. 140. Yeah, so Mentor Sulevic, the third favourite for this title, following MVG's withdrawal. The joint favourites, as of this morning, unless things have changed with the bookies, Dave Chisnell 100. and Peter Wright, In your both former 18. European Tour winners, both finalists this year as well on the Euro Tour. But Ian White, if he keeps playing this sort of stuff, double seven now for 5-1. And the there it is, it's a 12-dart leg for Ian, Ian White. White. And it looks like as if he's wrapping class. this Keep one on. up. Yeah, he'll have something to say about it, Ian White. He has made a Euro Tour final himself a few years ago now, back when the European Tour first started in its current incarnation. But he is averaging, 43. you know, around about that 98 mark. He's hitting 50% yeah. of his darts at double. This is solid stuff from the diamond. And maybe he just likes playing here. Semi-finalist here last year. Semi-finalist in Mulheim as well. Semi-finalist in Gibraltar. Can he go? 100. That's a step further, or maybe two steps further. Mm. Not just reaching the final, but actually winning a European Tour event. Oh, you know, he's capable of winning finals. He's done it seven times in the PDC. 60. First step is getting there, though. It looks like Jim Walker, his hopes of making the final day of action on a European tour are going to be dashed once again. 81. He's made a couple of last 16s on the Pro Tour this year, but he never made it through to the quarterfinal stages of a ranking event, and it doesn't look like that's going to change this weekend. Yeah, he had a good, uh, productive and a fairly lucrative weekend in Barnsley on the May Day Bank Holiday. When, as he say, he made back-to-back -back 16 or last 16 appearances, picked up three grand for his trouble. £5,250 is prize money prior to Risa, so he's got a grand and a half guaranteed here. But you suspect that will be the extent of his 85. paycheck this weekend with Walker trailing 5-1 here. It certainly looks like it. It's not a bad weekend for him. He's part of, you can see on his shirt, he's got Team Nevada. Nevada darts who have a small stable of some 45. very, very quality players. Saw Ricky Evans knocked out last night, but they've got Stephen Bunting in action. He's on next. Joe Cullen playing some very good darts this year. He's on the way. Final game of the night. Yeah, it'll be a crack 65. of that against Kim Hybrex. We could have a Hybex Brothers semi-final as well with Ronnie looking the business yesterday. Ronnie Hybrex, eh? Now then, Ian White. Looks good. It uh, was begging yeah. for it. 180 number four. Jim the finish Jim line is very Jim. much in sight. Unless. Unless. Hold on. Jim Walker with a little final flurry here. Surely not. No, it won't be. 94. And In Jim Walker hasn't 48. qualified for the other European Tour events this year. This could well be the last we see of him in 2016 on the European stage. Ian White, well, he's missed double 16 for double eights. And he's inside the 40. wire, so the agony goes on. And Jim Walker Jim might just gobble this up as well. Well, he was hitting 50% of his doubles prior to that visit. And you kind of fancied, give him two darts for the match, he'd probably take it out. But he may come back in this leg. Well, another one of those. Oh, he's, oh, hit, the he's hit the double. Yeah, well, that leads 22, so... Not he's the one he wanted, but he pinned it expertly. Jim and Jim Walker, Walker stays alive with a break of throw. Flag is and it's not first. over yet, folks. And we've seen this before as well, where a, an, an errant dart forces your hand, and all of a sudden... You just given that little bit of momentum, and 5 1 becomes 5 2. Hold a throw here for 5 3. Stranger things have happened on the European Tour stage. We've seen it before. Could have done without that, though. Well, two match starts missed by 42. Ian White. But 5 2 up, you would expect he's going to get more. Jim Walker.
just about clinging on in this one at the moment. And he's going to make Ian Wyatt work a little bit harder for it. And he sticks one in the treble one as well. 43. Oh, there we go. Two very similar opening salvos from Weiss and Walker. Doesn't like this. 60. Uh, he's deserting him now. And if Ian Wyatt can just tap in a 140 or maybe a 180 here. Well, bang on cue. He straight into the treble one bet again. Could be a good recovery though. Yeah, that'll do. 123. Yeah, good adjustment. He has outscored Jim Walker in this. Uh, Walker has hit a 180, but he's only had one of the score of 140 plus, whereas Ian White's had four 180s 100. and five ton 40 pluses. So you can see there that he's just been outpowering him in the early stages of legs, and that has kept Walker. He's only had four darts at double in the match. 100. And it's the kind of stuff that we know Ian White can produce over the course of the entire weekend. And it might be enough. He was 20 to 1 to win the title before the tournament started. 83. His odds have halved mm. before he even managed to get, get on, on stage. stage yeah. So, you know, it could well be the biggest title of Ian White's career if he does go on to lift the trophy on stage here tomorrow night. And he's a very real contender. Yeah, that's another step in the right direction as well for Ian White. Jim Walker simply has to stay on the coattails here of the number six seed. And it's not to be. He could have done without 95. that last start. But it might not matter anyway because White here, 95 from a place in the last 16. Oh, double there off. Ooh, wow. 79. It's another match dark Jim missed. Yukar, but Jim Walker having straight into the five has made this a lot more difficult than it might have been. 1-3-1 one, one is gettable, but not anymore. And Ian White will get more match darts, and surely nice this time the diamond is going to take 16. it out. Yeah, he's left himself the double 19, which is the double that Ian White missed a few moments ago. It might not matter because he's looking at double eight for a 6-2 win, the and there it is, the Ian number 16, White. Ian White, a semi-finalist here last year. Perhaps on course for another lengthy run in the International Darts Open. A winning start for the number six seed. It's the end of the road for Jim Walker. Highly impressive in qualifying. Came through his opening match yesterday. A good payday for him nevertheless. But it is farewell to the man from Dalbiti. And Ian White will see more of him tomorrow against either Gerwin Price or Dragatin Hall. Back there on stage later. On stage next, Stephen Bunting and Robbie Green in that Merseyside derby. Thank you. Applause for Jim Walker. <laughs> Ian, congratulations. A very solid match, first match of the tournament for you. Good start. Yeah, it's a good start. You know, you want to win your first game. Um, I'll do quite steady, miss a few doubles. I could have probably won it a bit earlier, but yeah, I'm through. It's actually, if, if, we, if we look at the tournament wins in 2016, you won three Pro Tour events. That's one of the best years you had already. Yeah, I'm doing quite well with my new darts from Unicorn and that. So, you know, it's going well for me. I, I just need to kick on this next six months, ready for the World Championships. I'm not mentioning nothing else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, uh, the, the second half of the year is, 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 a, is a part where we have a lot of uh, major events, TV events, very important to, to get into the top 10 again. Yeah, it is, but these Europeans are just as important, you know, so you want to try and win one of these or do quite well in two or three of them. So, yeah, we want one of these now. So we'll see you tomorrow again. Thank you very much. Ian White. Der zufrieden ist mit seinem ersten Match hier in Riesa, sagt, hat ein paar Doppel ausgelassen, hätte das Ding vielleicht ein bisschen früher schon zumachen können, aber das war alles in Ordnung. Er spielt ein klasse Jahr, eines seiner besten äh, Jahre überhaupt bei der PDC mit drei Turniersiegen. Er will jetzt angreifen. Er hat natürlich, wie alle anderen auch, die WM schon jetzt im Kopf. Dahin wird äh, jetzt marschiert. Es gibt äh, viele Major-Turniere in der zweiten Jahreshälfte, die dann ja auch auf Sport 1 übertragen werden. Und er sagt auch, gerade die European Tour ist immer wieder eine gute Generalprobe für die TV-Turniere, denn das ist von der Atmosphäre her ähnlich und manchmal Wenn ich jetzt hier in diese Kulisse schaue, ist es sogar noch ein bisschen besser. Also, Ian White steht damit im Achtelfinale. Er ist im Entscheidungstag mit dabei.
Und damit kommen wir gleich zum Happy Bad Match of the Day. Das Aufeinandertreffen von Stephen Bunting und Robbie Green. 